All right, Cruz, uh, my guest today is Cruz Gaj. So, Cruz, if you have to describe yourself, would you describe yourself as Batman? <laughs> no, I, um, honestly, he's he's one of my personas, but uh, I just I would describe myself as, uh, I, I want to say, a regular guy who just got lucky and got lucky and got lucky and uh, just enjoys every moment of it. So you know what, man? I, I appreciate you coming over here to the show, making the drive, taking the time to come over here. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for coming. No, thank you for having me, Sam. Again, this is, uh, it's exciting. So you were born in South Africa? No, I was born in a country called Zambia. It's Zambia. more South Central Africa. Okay. And then I lived there for about eight years. Then my parents sent me to England for school because... Um, Middle school wasn't good in Zambia. Mm -hmm. Then I did boarding school in Zimbabwe, which was an old boys boarding school. And then I finished off in South Africa. My family moved there with me for a while. And then we moved to Houston, Sugarland in 2000. Okay. Now, now something, uh, I don't know, is there, did you live in Canada for a little bit? No. So my, my, my wife is from Canada. Okay. So, the, and it's, uh, it's my happy place. It's your happy place. There so you, you go. go to Canada just to... I, with I, her family and I go there for family and I just go there to relax and um, it's it's just the small things about Canada that that uh, they're a bit more laid back and uh, they're they're they just they just take it easy so let's rewind this let's take it back you were born in Zambia went to a school in England then went to Zimbabwe and then moved with the family to South Africa to Sugarland Houston Sugarland Texas yep Boom, right there. Now you're in Houston. Pretty so much. where do you live at now? I'm in the Galleria area. Um, I love Houston. I mean, it's 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 home for me now. So, so you know, we see you around. I've seen you a couple of times uh, in the Batman suit. Talk <laughs> about the Batman suit for me. Sure. Um, so when I was in boarding school in Zimbabwe, um, I was the only brown kid at school. There was a lot of, uh, because of the way Zimbabwe was, you know, you, you've got the white kids, you've got the black kids, and then just a skinny brown kid. So I used to get bullied a lot, and uh, I used to get picked on a lot. And mm -hmm. um, one day I ended up finding a Batman comic, and I read it. And I was thinking to myself, this guy took a negative and made it a positive. So at night while everybody was sleeping, I would do push-ups, and I would actually steal their food so I could bulk up a bit. Mm -hmm. And uh, I ended up understanding that bullies are just cowards, so I had to be strong on the inside, and I had to be very positive about anything that I did. And I ended up you know, beating them at their own game. And for me, Batman became a, a symbol, a symbol of strength, a symbol of, of courage. Um, he just showed me never to give up. And I always told myself that uh, if I ever had the opportunity, I'd want to be Batman for, for people. I'd want to be that symbol for children mainly because I know when you're young and uh, you just have so much going on, you just, it's already hard enough as it is. You just don't need that extra pressure and anxiety. So it's always good when you see a superhero come in and makes you feel so good. And, you know, it's, it's always cool for a kid to say, I know Batman. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely. Now, I know you're doing something on December 9th with uh, Texas Children Care uh, Cancer Center. Yeah. But, Tell uh, me a little bit about that. Sure. Thanks, Sam. Um, one of the big things is I'm, I'm a big advocate for, uh, like I said, just children. I mean, if, if I can do anything to help any child or put a smile on any child's face, um, it makes my day. So one thing I, I did is I got together with a few friends of mine. Um, they, they, they've got an organization called Geo's Pet Warriors, and they actually get um, you know service dogs to go see children in cancer centers or, or see visit children that are suffering and help them feel good. So what we've done is we're actually getting together on December 9th, and we're going to be taking uh, unwrapped new books and new toys to the children at Texas Children's Cancer Center. But what I've done is I've contacted a lot of my friends, and these are working professionals such as yourself, Sam, and, and they're going to volunteer their time, dress up as superheroes and come out there, and we're calling ourselves the Just Us League. And to me, it's a testament to, again, human nature. It just takes one act of kindness, and hopefully that will become contagious, and a lot of people will see that, you know, if I take my time out of the day to go help someone less fortunate or someone that needs my help, it'll make a difference in their day. And again, that's that's Batman for me. You know, he's, he's someone that uh, took time out of his day or whatever he's doing to go help people. So we hope that the kids are just going to have an amazing holiday season. Yeah, this is awesome. I mean, you know, it's an awesome thing you're doing. These kids definitely need, you know, like an uplifting, some kind of boost. And I know you have two kids, right? I do. I have a 10-year-old princess and I have a 7-year-old monkey. 
<laughs> boy, one boy, one girl. One boy, one girl. All right. So you say you say seven year old monkeys. I mean, he's climbing everywhere, doing crazy things. He is something else. And uh, funny thing is, he's he's a little Batman too. So, oh, uh, I've I've seen I've seen that on your Instagram. Yep, yep. Cruz, tell tell us tell tell our listeners about you. What, what is your how they find you on Instagram? Um, so basically, I'm I'm Cruz eight two six on Instagram, and and I promote. Um, wellness and health and again you know just 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 try to be good to everybody and uh, try to help anybody in any way that I can so if someone is listening to you they want to see your Batman so they can go to C-R-U-I-Z-E 826 yeah C-R-U-I-Z-E 826 and uh, they can see all my shenanigans with my Batman and uh, everybody else in Houston whatever I've been doing and however else I've been working with people so uh, what is 826 your birthday no <laughs> Funny thing is, uh, eight twenty six is my uh, eight's my lucky number. I was born on eighth of August. Okay. And funny enough, when I went to boarding school, I started that in nineteen eighty eight. So it changed my life basically. And my laundry tag number in boarding school was eight two six. So wow. I always loved that number. And then um, whenever I see eight two six on a watch, um, it just takes me back to some good places. Oh, good. You know, eight. Um, so we have something in common. Your birthday is eight eight August eight. And my dad's was August 8th. There so, you go. So we share something over I here. I know. He's a great man. <laughs> so, yeah, definitely. Leo, huh? <laughs> yes, sir. And I got I got twins. Oh, They're wow. Leos. August 3rd. You're in trouble. <laughs> I got my mom, who's a Leo. <laughs> so I got a lot of Leos in my in my life. Yep, you surrounded got, by got, greatness. Got one more right now with you. Oh, there you go. So tell me. So I've seen you, you know, um, working out. You, you say you promote uh, health and wellness. Tell us a little bit about that. So, I mean, my background has always been, I've been involved in healthcare marketing for about 15 years. Um, and, and over the time, I've, I've got to know some really good people and uh, working, of course, working with doctors, um, I've understood that, you know, how important healthcare is, especially for, for you know, it's, it's really amazing that I'm learning more about men's issues and how a lot of men our age, you know, 40 plus, are uh, I mean I, I'm saying speaking for myself and I, I know Sam is like 26 but um, a lot of our uh, which Sam yeah, you. so so at that point you know I'm trying to just just see what I can do to change things up in my lifestyle or in my workout habits or my eating habits to at least make things better and so at least with that I have the ability to go out to people I know and people I care about and say you got to try this you've got to do that like I'm speaking to them from experience as rather just like telling them what to do mm -hmm. um, so it's been a, it's been an amazing journey for me this year and I've met some some fantastic trainers I've been to some some really crazy facilities and uh, what's happened is my body not only has my body changed, but my mind and um, I, I, I dare say it, but my soul has even become so open to a lot of different things. And uh, it's taught me a lot about myself. I've lost a lot of anxiety and I've lost a lot of stress, which I really, really do appreciate. So, you know, I got a I got a stressful job. You can imagine that, right? Yeah. You have worked in some high stressful jobs yourself. And I, I'm telling you, the day I don't work out or do something in the morning, Man, I'm like, I wish I would have done something. The day I do, I mean, it's just the day goes by a little better, a little more smoother. Yep. You know, I got a little more energy. And uh, like, I, I, I enjoy running. I mean, I enjoy doing physical things. And I mean, you know, I was just never that guy growing up. But but I mean, as, as you get older, I mean, and I'm, my goal is never to get a six pack or anything. It's just to stay fit and look okay right good and and just to make sure that just to make sure that uh, you know somehow some way live a healthy lifestyle so i can live a little longer no i mean I, the the one thing that i remember um got to me was i was tying my shoelace one day and i was i was winded i i was breathing heavy and at that point i said i don't want to be that guy anymore and um i i mean i'll, I'll tell you this sam i mean i respect you Every morning I, I wake up, I go work out, I feel like a gladiator. Yeah. My day is ready. I'm ready to fight the next battle. I'm ready to protect what I need to protect. And uh, it's, it's a great feeling. So, so, so what do you, why do you think for, how old are you, Cruz? I'm 44. So you're 44. Uh, same, I mean, you know, we, us men in 40s, why is it so important for us to work out or take care of ourselves, live a healthy lifestyle? Why do you think? I mean, just for the mere fact that you can add years to your life, um, you know, just, just by changing a few things or tweaking a few things. And then the other thing is um, just getting rid of the stress. You know how much, how much 
problems, stress causes on your body, on your mind. And then even that that mere mere fact of anxiety, because you you know you you're anticipating the phone call, you're anticipating the meeting, so you've already built up so much anxiety in you. So you've tensed up your muscles, you you're really beating up your body on the inside in so many ways. And uh, and then you're around the wrong people because again, you know when when our stressful lifestyles, we end up being around toxic people who just keep on take take taking. Mm-hmm. Um, but through working out or through at least meditation. I've learned to calm down that stress. I've learned to, you know, mind that anxiety. I've learned to understand when I can say no. The problem with with me and my lifestyle is I never used to say no. Mm. I wanted to be very accommodating, but at certain point things were getting toxic, so I was able to pull back and say, you know what, that's not good for me, and and I don't need to do that. Um, and I and also in working out as much as I do or being around, I'm around some of these trainers that are just inspirational. Mm. Um, one of my trainers, Firdos Khan. Um, you know, he trains James Harden, but apart from that, I mean, he, just the energy I get from him, it just makes me understand that that I can keep on pushing or keep on fighting. Then I go to train with his brother, Taj Khan, and the same thing. The energy is just, it's infectious, you know? Mm-hmm. And, and then I share that with people I care about, and they end up coming out and working with me. Yeah, I've heard about Taj Khan. Yeah, he, who, who trains Harden? Uh, is it Taj or Firdos? So, Firdos trains, trains Harden, and uh, Taj has also got some very exclusive members in his clientele. Gotcha. So, uh, I, I, you know, at first I was intimidated when I saw them because these guys are training superstars, mm-hmm. and I'm this 40-year-old guy. But uh, So when you work out, what is your goal? My goal is, is I, I want to feel good. I want to feel like Batman. Uh-huh. You, know, the, you know, to me that means I want to be strong. I want to be sharp. And I want to have the ability to just do things that that my body can you know can help me get to that level. You know when you when you work out and you're healthy, I mean it also gives you confidence. Oh, and yeah. I know I know you're a confident man. A couple of years ago, I saw you uh, <laughs> you know doing a you emceed uh, a gala that I was uh, uh, at. So so I've seen so I've seen you in action. But uh, do you think now that you more active, have a healthy lifestyle, do you think your confidence has gone up than before oh it has it definitely i mean i i think one of the things that i attribute my confidence to is again being that kid scared of everybody that it made me brave it made me just just become batman and stand up and talk to people um and my my thing is i always want to put a smile on everyone's face so cruz let me ask you a question for people who are listening to you don't know you if you have to describe cruz in your own words how would you describe cruz um, I, I would. I just, mean, it can be, it can be, you know, a leader. It can be, you know, from an occupation. What, what, what would you, what would you describe? How would you describe yourself? I, I would honestly just see myself as a positive connector, um, meaning someone who who really has a good a good instinct on people and has the ability to now put those people in the right room and make sure good things happen out of it, um, be it you know through sales or through marketing or even through consulting, um, I think I have a very good intuition to sit down and, and you know make sure that the right people are there and can make it work. Obviously, there's gonna be some times when, when things don't happen, but I, I think another, another one of my attributes is I'm very good at follow-up. I'm, I'm persistent and uh, I, I'm very, very, um, I guess, passionate about something I believe in. So once you have passion, I don't think anything can stop you. You know that, Sam. I mean, I'm sitting in this facility that you've created, and I'm like, <laughs> this. Honestly, this is like it's a city. Sam is, <laughs> has created a little city here, and uh, uh, exclusive city. <laughs> an exclusive, exactly, an exclusive city. And everywhere you go, I mean, he's got uh, he's got so much potential for growth, and that's what I admire about Sam. Someone who's got vision. So you know, I respect that, and I, I, always, I appreciate you know, it, man. I that. appreciate Thank it. You. So tell me, tell me, what are what are some of your goals, or what should what can we look forward, you know, in Cruz's future? Like what is coming up? Because we, I'm, I've seen you around in the city. I know last last year or so, you've been more on the social scene, and you know, going to places, connecting people, connecting with people. Um, uh, what is what is some of the short term goal? But short term goals definitely. I do want to, I do want to kick off with the Just Us League Houston. I want to, I want to really try and get more people together to understand that that uh, you know uh, we can make a difference in a child's day or a child's life and do amazing things for these kids. Um, so 
as long as I mean, as long as we keep on, you know, going in the right direction, helping the children or working with them any way we can, that's that would be my biggest goal. I want I want Houston to be known as as the city that really cares. We've we've done so much. I mean, Sam, I know that you've done a lot for people with the floods, the hurricanes, and and everything that we've been through. So that's you know that's that's the kind of city I want to live in, and that's the kind of city I'm proud of. And I know there's more of us out there. Um, call us all heroes, or, or in our own way, you know, I really want to promote that. But um, you know, apart from that, my my goal is to really also promote good health, I guess, and wellness amongst a lot of people in in this city because. Um, you know, again, we've got a we've got a, a great opportunity to just change things and change the way we are just by by controlling what we eat or controlling how we how we work out or who we work out with. So um, with that in mind, I think, you know, I think we can be a really, really strong city, mind, body and soul. So let's talk about eat. You say, what do you. Let's just say. Where's a go-to place or a go-to <laughs> restaurant for for cruises? So, so you you will always find me at Bismillah Cafe. That's my uh, it's my he's my uh, uh, he's my happy place for for different reasons. Um, I love Inam. He he runs a great shift there, and he's he's always he's he, you know he's he's again like us. He's got vision. He's always innovating with with what he does. Um, and again, this this is a guy that that will go out of his way to help a family or, or a whole lot of people. And the food is always, you know, it always hits a spot for me. So I know when I go there, it's like it's like that old TV show, Cheers. You know, you like yeah. to go somewhere where everybody knows your name. Uh -huh. They're always glad you came. So I think for that fact alone, it's just it's home. So they know your name, so you're always there. I'm always there. What a, what? A, so let's just say that's a casual setting. Yep. If you have to go to a formal setting or or a little more a little more um, I'll just say a little more formal where where, <laughs> will it, where, where would you go I, I'm a steak 48 guy you're a steak 48 yeah guy. They, they they hit my wagyu steak and again Inam, I thank you for for teaching me how to order steak <laughs> but they they hit it on the spot so. so you know I was talking to uh, Charles Adam I don't know if you know Charles Adams or uh, you do so I was talking to him yesterday and he does not like steak 48 why he he thinks it's too buttery Ooh. you know I, I i'm a steak i like steak 48 and, and you know i like steak 48 for a mere reason that that they know me yeah. i mean so anytime i mean i can call them on a saturday at three o'clock and i say I'm, i got a party of 10 and and they got a table for me right so good. they'll accommodate me and i like that a little more i mean you know of course you you like to go to places where you're more welcome you feel like Hey, you know what? Whatever it is, I'm gonna take care of you. Exactly. And uh, they got a good management team over there. I like the food over there. Honestly, I do. Foods never let me down. And then, Foods. and then they kill it with that dessert. If I get that uh, red velvet bread pudding, <laughs> yeah, I'm down. That's so it. That Charles said red velvet uh, bread pudding yesterday too. But you know, my best dessert over there is the corn brulee. Oh yes, dude, that oh. corn brulee is so good. I know. I know. Okay, like I will, I will do the. I'll, I'll start with the shrimp. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, what what is it called crispy shrimp, right? Yeah, crispy shrimp, crispy shrimp, the uh, and and the sh uh, shiitake pepper. peppers. Yep. Oh my god! I know. That's, that's how I start that every day. I mean, it's just I'm I'm being redundant about it every time I go, but that's how I start. Sam, you're making me hungry. <laughs> right there. We got to go over there one day. We got to go over there one day. Please. Um. So so tell me something. Um, steak forty eight. Mm -hmm. You you're a sushi eater. You know what? I, I actually I was gonna share an experience. I had I had probably some of the best sushi in Houston. Um, it was well, actually two places. MS Sushi. I did the amakasa style, sitting at the bar, and we had twenty seven pieces mm. handmade and hand rolled in front of us. Amazing. And then I went to Kokoro, which is in downtown. Uh -huh. It's uh, new and it's in in the one of the food halls, and so good. So I tell you what, I, I, I'm gonna blow your mind. Please, the best sushi I've ever had. I mean, I like sushi. I've eaten sushi at a lot of places. I've never been to MF. Okay, or you gotta go to Magic Fingers. I gotta go over there. But there's a place in suburbs of Houston. There's one in Cypress, one in um, Richmond, right there by by my store, right across the street from my store. <laughs> okay. This place is called Top Sushi. Okay, it's a small place. You can you can call it a dive more i mean it's really not a dive but but i mean it's not a big setting it's a small 2000 square feet restaurant but i'm telling you the rolls are on point wow the sashimi is fresh 
Top sushi it is. Top sushi. You got to go try it out. I will. I will. I mean, if you're ever in Sugarland, Cyprus, or I think they even got one on Highway 6 in Missouri City. Done. So I, have, I think they have three places. Done. You know, matter of fact, we, we need to hook up one day. We'll go please, over there. Please. Yeah, we'll go over there. You know, I really don't do a lot of lunch, but, but I always do like dinner. Okay. So, you know, we can do an early dinner or something please, like that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, man, this top sushi is on point. I, I got to check it. You, you got to check it out. Uh, so you you told me the the short term goals. What yeah. are some long term goals? Well, long term goals is is I do want to stay in Houston. Um, I would love to continue working with wellness. Um, again, you know it's it's a uh, it's something I'm passionate about. So initially, I mean, I'd, I'd love to work with some of these specialty trainers, especially gyms that I go to. Mm -hmm. um, see if maybe we can expand on some ideas and do some different things with them. But I think that that like a lot of people in Houston are moving towards the health and wellness um, aspect of their lifestyle. So it would be a good time to start looking into things and, and really working with a lot of people in that, in that area. And because again of my, my expertise or my, my background in healthcare marketing, um, I think that it, it would also be interesting to see if, if we can get them to connect, if that makes sense. Yeah. So now you've got personal trainers having open access to a doctor and actually talking to them about their patients or their client's pain that, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that they can't seem to be, you know, get rid of, or it's just, it keeps on festering there every time they work out. So, you know, and, and you know, working with a lot of people who do these contests, these competitions, these uh, um, strongman competitions, mm -hmm. and we have a lot in Houston. I didn't even know about it. It's like a whole oh, yeah. subculture. And once you get introduced to it, it's just like keeps on going. We also have some champion MMA fighters. We have some champion boxers. Um, so again, you know, with them. Who, who, who are some of the champion MMA fighters? So I met with uh, Killer B, uh, uh -huh. B Wen. She's actually in Thailand right now. She, she just had a fight there and she does some training. But, you know, again, amazing people. She's, she's also um, a big advocate for, um, you know, abusive uh, women and, mm -hmm. and what's been going on in that that realm so i've been i heard i heard about that yeah so uh, she she's also she's a great spokes she spoke at stanford and and she's done some great things um i've met colin wright he's a great fighter darwin price another great fighter um you know the the charla twins i've, I've met them oh, yeah. at different gyms but you know like houston's got a lot of these these athletes and we have got a uh, derek lewis yeah we yeah. haven't we haven't even gone into like the the soccer aspect or the american football aspect but again you know are these guys seeing the right doctors are yes. they are they seeing the right physical therapists things like that i think you can make that happen with uh you know you're dealing with a lot of doctors in your previous life yeah my previous <laughs> life there you go so uh is is uh advocating health and wellness i mean is speaking in the future How about that you know i i, I mean i'm like you know I, i'm i have a big mouth so i have no problem <laughs> i have no problem talking about it and because i'm passionate about it yeah i uh i would love to to sit down and and uh you know make something of it and really talk to people and have people actually come out there and explain some of the stuff that they go through you know s sleeping issues um you know uh, TMJ issues, things like that. But uh, I think a lot of people suffer because they're not doing it right. So imagine they had the ability or they had someone to guide them the right way, how good they would feel. You know, sleeping is a is a big deal, oh, yeah. uh, I mean, a big issue. A lot of people don't understand about, and I mean, you know, because I suffer through it and I mean, you know, so I know and I can relate to it. A lot of, a lot of guys, they don't, they don't even know that they, you know, sleep apnea. That's yeah. a big thing. I mean, I, I I suffer from sleep apnea, and I was one of those guys who, you know, for a long time did not want to put that mask, you know, the CPAP machine, because it was it's uncool. It is uncomfortable as well. Yeah. Well, it's really not uncomfortable if you wear it and you get used to it. Yeah. It's really not uncomfortable. Yeah. But a lot of people think. First time you see it, you're like, oh, it's uncomfortable. I know. They got, you know, dark Vader mask. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but I mean, it's really not that bad. But a lot of people, I mean, I, I know about five or six friends that I've convinced to put that on. And they, they all swear by it now. And I mean, you know, once you put it on. But there's a lot of people who don't understand that if, they is, if they're snoring or because when there's smoke, there's fire. Simple as that. Yeah. And uh, I mean, you know, a lot of people need to know. I mean, you know, s sleep is one thing, right? Not sleeping enough is another thing. Oh, huge. You know. So, so I mean, not to cut you off, but, but I mean, the one of the biggest problems is, you know, if you don't get a good night's sleep, it affects your work. It affects your relationships. It affects your, I mean, your health in so many ways. 
Um, and then we've had cases of people dying because they don't get a good night's sleep. Good night's sleep. So yeah, it's it's a big issue. And and one thing I'm I'm glad you addressed this, but Sam, like men's issues, nobody really addresses it because men don't want to talk about that. They, they don't want to talk about exactly. it. Exactly. I mean, the problem is men really don't want to talk about it to their friends. Yeah. Because they don't want to be in that court of public you know opinion yeah. it, uh, it's, it's scary i mean if you you can't go to your friend and say look dude i think i have erectile dysfunction yeah you know it, it's it's a tough thing or or hey hey sam i think my testosterone's down mm -hmm. you know and at that point you know they have they have so much stress building up about that and then they're stressing about their the jobs team. they're stressing about you know everything falls into that right. and i mean for a man that that can be very challenging and and daunting i mean and you know, us men, we need to we need to learn how to talk, and we we don't. Yeah, we, we don't. don't. Yeah. I mean, if I tell you I have an erect, you know, ED, and you know, all of a sudden, I'm just scared of being picked on or oh, yeah, made yeah. fun. You yeah. know, I mean, you, you, I, I mean, you know, I'm I'm guilty of it as well. I sure. mean, you know, just messing with my friends. I mean, you know, and, and that's what us guys do. And you know, the guy who's suffering from it really don't want to talk about it. And it's I mean, it's, it's bad. So imagine if we could go out there and, and uh, help people who feel that. I mean, you know, they, they, they'll have productive, healthy lifestyles. Yeah. Tell me something. Uh, is there something that you always wanted to be asked, like, you know, while you're out, but nobody ever asked? Uh, <laughs> I guess it's really funny, and, and uh, it's, it's just... Nobody asked me how I'm doing. <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense, but nobody ever is like, looks at me and says, how are you, Cruz? Or, hey, what's going on? You know, like, it's it's more like uh, I'll ask them and then they'll go into their health. I'll say, okay, that's fine. Yeah, what can I do to help you, you know? Yeah. But no one will ever turn to me and say, hey, Cruz, how are you doing? What's going on with you? And uh, at that point, you know, it's just, it's, I guess I'll, I'll be honest and say, yeah, you know, it's been, it's been good. You know, I had a great workout today or, or whatever, but I, I don't think anybody's like stopped and done that. But, yeah. but I understand, you know, life gets, life gets fast. So with that note, let me ask you a question. How are you doing? <laughs> Sam, <laughs> I'm doing good. I'm doing good. It's exciting. How was the workout today? Today was, today was good. So how many days you work on? I, I try to do six days a week. Six days a week. And then sometimes I'll even do a two a day. I'll try and change it up. Really? I'll do a workout and then I'll do a yoga. I'll do boxing. Um, and then I'll go do Pilates. Um, but I think my body is like shocked and like, what the hell are you doing? But uh, I feel like when I sleep at night, Sam, I, I mean, I sleep like a log. Yeah. I get knocked out. And and even even the other thing I did, I, I really want to invite you. It's a cold fire and ice I, uh, there's this gym called Mechanics. Oh, I saw that. Is, yeah. is that the one where you take that cold uh, yeah. bath or something? You get into the ice bucket. Man, I got to do that. Oh, it's so good. So um, Justin, um, the gentleman who runs it, um, he's very good. I mean, his gym, Mechanics, it's, it's all it's all resistance training. It's no weights. You're doing pull-ups and push-ups. So your body is really getting tested. Mm -hmm. Then you get into the ice bath. And it's really big now because it's for recovery and inflammation. It's it's huge. Yeah. Your body goes into shock, but it goes into like a fight or flight mode, and it starts trying to repair all the knots and everything that you've got going on. So you do three minutes in the ice bath, and then you do fifteen minutes in a sauna. You do this for three rounds, and Sam, you sleep like a baby. Really? Like that night, your body's so exhausted, it just knocks you out. And yeah. then when you wake up. You feel so fresh. Your mind is thinking about new things. So Tony Robbins does it every morning. Yeah, yeah he does yeah. it every morning. So it's just, there's, there's some kind of science behind these things that uh, that really do promote a lot of uh, uh, growth and progression in yourself. Well, football players do it right exactly. after the game. Yeah. I mean, you know, they have to, or, or um, some even do it after practice. I, and I heard, uh, um, um, what's his name? Dennis Rodman is doing a nice bath challenge where he sits in the bath and interviews other athletes or actors. Really? Yeah. Wow. And uh, yeah, it's pretty intense. So besides being asked, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> what is some of the other stuff um, that you wish someone would come out, come out to you and ask you like, hey, you know what? It can be anything. Sure. What is your favorite color? You um, know, something like that. Yeah, no. Um, I guess, I guess uh, one thing, one thing I want, I would like people to ask me is, is, you know, you get that, that sense that you make everything look so easy. Mm -hmm. because you just you're just so used to it and you're working hard at it i want i would like someone to ask me how do you do it how do you how do you balance all this how do you how do you keep it how do you keep it uh together 
you know, you, you've gone through some bad stuff, you, you're still pushing, things like that. Like, like, how do you, how do you hold it together? And I guess, you know, that's one thing I always want to ask my, ask myself, or I ask people who I respect, you know, you, you make it look so easy. Like you, Sam, today, you walked me through this, this whole beautiful city of a warehouse, but it wasn't this easy, like two years ago, right? No. Yeah. Even when you were just thinking about, in fact, 10 years ago, you, you had no concept that you would be here. So at that point, I want to say, like, like, how did, how do you get past those challenges? How do you get past those roadblocks and and just keep pushing? Even when people look at you and say you're a clown, you know, what are you doing, Sam? This is ridiculous. You know, how do you, how how does your mind, how does your body adjust to that and keep going? What are you asking me? I'm asking you. Yeah. <laughs> well, he's asking me now. Yeah. Uh, Man, it was supposed to be. I'm supposed to be. I, I, I got it. I'm, so I'm gonna, you know what? Nothing can be easy, right? Nothing is easy. You're gonna. And I always believe in like you're gonna make bad decisions, and you're just gonna have to live with it. And everybody makes mistakes. Everybody fails in something. And and life is not easy. Life is hard. You you're gonna have to do. But there's always that you gotta have a roadmap, right? So if you if you want if you want to take your kids to Disney World and you're gonna get in the car, you're gonna have to know okay what which freeway I'm gonna take, how to get there, and some you gotta have some kind of plan. But at the end of the day, you just gotta get out there and work. And I was like I, I was talking to somebody yesterday too, and I'm like you know all this stuff about hey uh, you know on Instagram and everything you know be your own boss, don't build someone else else's dream and all that stuff is all good and well. But at the same time, you know, some people need structure. Some people need roadmaps. Some people need discipline. So, so it's not, nothing is wrong with working for somebody, but the way I do it is like, okay, I wake up in the morning and there are days that I feel like I fucked up. I mean, I just fucked around and didn't do nothing. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, and I mean, you know, problems happen all the time. I'm dealing with several problems all the time, but it's just like how you keep your sanity. And like one of the one of the ways for me is like, you know, getting going and running. And I mean, you know, sometimes people are like, how did you run seven miles? And wow. you know, like, well, you know, just like I feel like you got to do something that takes you away from, you know, that all the problems. And it can be anything. It can be laying on the bed and looking at the ceiling, right? Yeah. It can be meditating. It can be just watching your kids play and run around in the park or watching your kids do homework or turning on Netflix and just dazing. Yeah. The Netflix you know, and chill. Yeah. I mean, that's, you know, uh, not in that way, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, or, or, or going for a run and, you know, going through that pain with your body, uh, going to the gym and doing, you know, an hour of, uh, you know, a boxing workout or Pilates or, or whatever you're, you know, escape it but escape is but everybody needs an escape and every because problems are are there mm -hmm. and they're gonna be there tomorrow too i promise you yeah i know okay they're not gonna go away but you're just gonna have to you gotta have a road map how, where am i at how am i gonna do it where am i gonna be at in two three four five six seven ten years um i i, I have to do it i have to persevere through it and it it takes time okay but and 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 we know it's slow. Everything is slow. But nobody can say quitting. Quitting. You know what you're doing because it's taking time. It's not going to speed it up. I mean, so I, I mean, you know, that's my answer. It's no. you know, you you don't know that what's going to be in ten years. You just got to have a road a road map. Where am I going to be in in two years, five years, seven years, ten years? Have some benchmarks. Follow up with it. Go to work. Work hard. Work every day. Escape. Get out of the problems and just continue doing it. Persevere. That's perfect. Does that answer? Uh, that's perfect. That's. <laughs> I mean, no, I, I wouldn't have known that. Again, looking at you, um, what you've accomplished, and and again, your relationships. Your relationships are key. You you you've worked really hard. Uh, you've got good people around you. So that's also a huge. Uh, uh, what's it called? A huge testament to who you are as a person. And then, of course, you know your ability to to just keep on having that vision. Now, now we know that in your previous life, your job was challenging. You're working several hours yeah right what is your schedule looks like now so now um because you're taking a step back sure i've taken a step back and what i what i do is uh um i spend time with the kids uh -huh. so in the mornings i'll wake up uh, make breakfast or you know just just be with them for as much as i can drop them off at school um i'd go work out so i'd be probably between eight to about nine nine thirty i'd go to work out with dose or someone else 
Um, and then after that, I just, uh, um, what's it called? The, I've been going to different restaurants, trying different uh, nutritionists. Also, I've just been meeting different people who've been telling me about um, um, my diet, stuff like that. And then, um, you know, weirdly enough, I'd, I'd just go pick up the kids at three and then uh, just have a bit of, bit of a laid back time. I've been connecting a lot with uh, a lot of the, the gyms and trainers outside. So I've traveled as far as Cyprus, you know, right down to Richmond to go to some of the different gyms there. The mm-hmm. M- I, I was actually at a, at a MMA gym up in uh, Katy yesterday. So again, you know, just, just trying these different things out. And uh, also physical therapists, I've been, during the day, I'll just meet some of them, talk to them about what they do and what their specialties are. This morning, I met with a gentleman at a place called Fit Factor, and he does different kind of strength training. So he mm-hmm. went through my shoulders with me. So I'm just like collecting, collecting data, yeah. collecting information. And, um, and then the other thing is like with my nonprofit organizations, we'll meet like later on in the evening. Um, I've met with the arthritis foundation of Houston. I've met with, uh, a lot of different, um, uh, non for profits chart and all that. And then just trying to, um, see what I can do to help them or connect them to the right people. So, so you work with the nonprofit or do you, I, are you, I'm kind you, of like you form a, one? I, I kind of work with different ones, meaning I'm affiliated with them, but I, I haven't formed mine yet. Um, and I, I, I want to be very, um, I guess fluid about the way I do mine. I don't want it to mm-hmm. be structured or I don't want there to be any kind of monies involved. I want it to be more of a, um, organization that just has the ability to again, help or serve, in um, a support uh, supporting role. So you said Geo uh, Geo's Pet Warriors. You're yeah. working with them. Yeah, I'm working with Geo's Pet Warriors. I'm working with the Arthritis Foundation of Houston. I'm working with a uh, uh, a foundation called P uh, Pennies for Education and Healthcare. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've been raising money for children in India, mm-hmm. um, helping them build clinics, um, especially hospitals, and uh, for their books and and educational needs. Have you ever been to India? Uh, no, no, and, and I'm Indian, so yeah. that's. I, uh, it's funny because we were, my whole family was born in Africa. They were they were shipped down during uh, the late, uh, sorry, the early 1900s. So tell me, shipped down? What a lot of people don't know about that. So, so yeah, there, there's uh, there's a uh, there's a whole um, a story that that people don't understand. But but when England colonized India. England would then uh, um, just pack up a lot of Indians on a ship and ship them down to their different colonies. Um, that's how my great great grandparents ended up in Africa, where they were working on a sugarcane plantation. Ship them as slaves, pretty much, yeah. Okay. And then they were able to uh, break out and go to Zambia mm-hmm. and then establish themselves over there. So there's a lot of Indians in Africa, yeah. and I speak an Indian language, and I also speak an African language. So, so there was like there's a lot of them in Zambia and Kenya, Kenya, Zambia, um, in Botswana and Zimbabwe, yeah. and a lot in South Africa. A lot in South Africa, yeah. yeah. Big, big Indian population, huge. And I mean, like, but, like even over here in Trinidad, yeah. There's um same thing even in uh yeah Jamaica in the islands, yeah, yeah. Because well, those were those were colonies, colonies British of, colonies, yeah. right? So that's where a lot of them were shipped at. Um. So, so a lot of free time right now. A lot of free time. <laughs> I didn't want to say it like that. I don't want to sound like a bum, but yeah. I, gotta, well, well, I mean, but that's good, you know. Yeah, sometimes, yeah. It's, sometimes it's good. But uh, because, I mean, you, you better enjoy it while it's there. Oh, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, no, I'm taking full advantage of it. Uh, I, I do like the, the, uh, the, the freedom and the ability to just not even answer my phone. So, Cruz, you have a 10-year-old and a 7-year-old. Yeah. Right? They're still they're still very young. Yeah, and that's that's the greatest thing you can spend a lot of time with. Them oh yeah, right now. Yeah, what are some of the regrets that you have? Um, I, I think in my past life I didn't spend enough time with my family. Yeah. Um, and uh, you know it's 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 spilled milk. Um, right. But but at the end of the day I do know I missed out on a lot, and uh, there's nothing that'll bring it back. But but you know I was also very passionate about what I did, mm-hmm. and again I had that mentality that I'm doing this for them. Yeah, you know, we all sit back and you question yourself at like two in the morning. Why are you still at the office? Well, I'm doing this for them. Yeah. So. Well, you justify it like that. Yeah, you know, yeah. but but again, you I'm know, guilty too. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's it's it, it just happens so fast, and I ended up missing ballet recitals. I ended up missing soccer games, and uh, you know, for that, I I I you know, there's there's nothing that breaks my heart more than than knowing I did that. Yeah. Um, you know, and and I think my kids also just just didn't even know me during that time because. As even when I was home, 
I was on my phone. Yeah. You know, I was I was looking at numbers or I was calling people and and um, you know it's it's tough for for kids to keep seeing that. And you know you know th- this is something that is so common that that uh, that us a lot of men more than women. I mean, there's women who do that too, but, yeah. but a lot of men who do that, I mean, you know, we, we justify, hey, we're doing it for the family and then we don't even end up knowing our own family. Yeah. And I mean, you know, I mean, there's some, I mean, it's in a spilled milk, you can't do nothing about it. You just can try to make up time. And yeah. I mean, you know, I, I think about that all the time too, so. Yeah, you know, and, I, and I, I thought I was just managing my time wrong because everybody else I worked with, they had a good balance. You know, they could see their children at lunch and things like that. I couldn't because my my position was I had to be in front of clients every day, meeting them during the day in their offices, and then in the evenings I had to be out with them, you know, having dinners and all that. Then after that, I would be closing out the day with my reports and everything. So it was it was a pretty it was a pretty long day for me. So by the time I got home, I was just spent. So you say regret is where well, you missed a lot of family opportunities. I did. Yeah. So if someone is listening to this and they're like, "Man, what should I do?" I, what would you say? I, I honestly, like, like it's it. It is easy to get caught up in in the. I, I don't want to say rat race, but it's easy to get caught up in the whole. You know, um, I'm doing this for my family, and and, but but honestly, you you just really have to take a step back, and you can put in the work, but but take a step back and really try to figure out a balance in your life. Mm-hmm. Um, if you don't have that balance, then then um, you you've got to find a way to just just keep everybody so, happy. So you so you got so you basically gonna tell me balance so i mean if my job is so demanding and i mean i need a job because i mean my 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 status i mean the lifestyle i'm doing right now the lifestyle my kids are used to has gone up a little bit sure i mean what do you say like at least at least give them a couple of hours give them a day uh, what you, would you say you, i mean even if you have to schedule it you have to schedule yeah. it. like literally you have to shut your phone down or you tell everybody in your office and i respect people who do that yeah that um, you know, no, I've got lunch with my kids, or yeah. no, I've, I'm uh, I'm actually going to be late for my son's soccer game or my daughter's recital. Yeah, you know, take um, time to take time to spend some time with them. You do, you you have to, and and uh, the funny thing is, the small things matter to them. Yeah, you know, so. you know, when we get done, I think I'm going to call my kids and schedule start scheduling because <laughs> you know my kids are now a little older. Yeah, so so it's it's a, it's a, yeah, I'm going to schedule some lunch times with them. Oh, that's good. And man. you know, you know, it's it's good because like you know, we have family dinner. Yeah. But I think one on one is so much greater. Oh, I, I had the greatest conversation with my daughter last night before I put her to sleep. Um, we talked about, um, uh, you know, we just talked about different things in the holidays and what was important to her. And it made me realize that I wouldn't have known this if I didn't spend that extra time with her. And uh, now I know that, you know, to make sure she's she's not um, and she's not in the situations or she's not around family, she doesn't want to be around things like that. So it it really helped. Is there any stereotype that you battle in your common life um i, I guess i guess the the one thing that i'm i'm always going to be very very sensitive to is just i guess racism uh-huh because i grew up in africa during the time of apartheid and it was made very clear to me that i was a brown piece of shit mm-hmm. i was told by people smaller than me or just because they they were fair skinned that i was a brown you know piece of shit and i wouldn't amount to anything Mm. So now, um, and, and you know, it still goes on, you know, mm. be it very passive aggressive, but there's still elements of it. And, and um, I just, I really don't want it in my life, but, but when it does happen, it, 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 uh, it takes me back to that little 11 year old boy. And uh, I remember thinking, wow, you know, I just wish we'd change all that. Yeah. That, that's, that, yeah, that's, that's hard. Yeah. Uh, what are, tell me some people like three top people that inspired you. Um, I guess I mean if if I say um like the 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 one person that I really really just just you know would think that wow this this guy is he he was my my, well, he's my uncle in Zambia when I grew up with him um you know he had a perfect balance he was a good guy he worked hard uh, my dad had an auto parts mechanic shop and my dad's a mechanic by trade so he would work hard and then you know he'd play hard he, he'd have soccer after work and you know we'd we'd always be there and he introduced me to you know great music, things like that. I mean, big George Michael fan and the fashion and everything in those days. But I I admired his balance. I admired his his ability to just be very 
very cool in tough situations and when he needed to be aggressive he was you know your uncle yeah my uncle shabir so um and your dad's I, brother yeah my dad's brother one of the best things was having him and another one of my childhood heroes his best friend is a big punjabi guy so mm -hmm. you know punjabi guys are huge um he looked like the beast from beauty and the beast mm -hmm. you know big his his laugh was infectious. I mean, he could light up the room with his laugh, his personality. So imagine this big guy with this very strong English accent. Um, he played rugby. Um, you know, I, I admire these people because they're full of life. They mm -hmm. would walk in a room and, and they would make people look at them and say, you know, wow, these, these are good guys. Um, and then another person I look up to is actually, <laughs> he's a friend of mine from Zambia. His name is Rahan Oza. Mm -hmm. And he's actually a shark on Shark Tank. Um, we grew up in the same town. He's, um, a, he's a shark on Shark Tank? Yeah. He's, is he, is he, uh, so he's in the show? Yeah, he's in the show. Really? So we grew up in Zambia together, and uh, whenever I see him, I'm just like so inspired. He was, he was probably about three years older than me, but I remember seeing him as a kid, and he'd be wearing a blazer with a pocket square. And I was like, why is this kid wearing, you know, but, <laughs> but that just shows you he knew he was going to be big. Uh -huh. um, he partnered with 50 Cent, and they, uh, they sold vitamin water to Coke. He's doing something with Justin Timberlake. He's, you know, he's such a, he's, a, he's all about brand. And I, I really respect that. And he's mm -hmm. done so well. And I love the fact that he always goes back to Zambia and he takes care of his family there. And um, he's always doing something for the community. So those would be three people that I really. So where does he live at right now? He's in LA and New York. He's so LA, yeah, he's, yeah. he's in the big life. He's, he's living the, with the big lights. Huh? He is, he is. So what do you like about Houston? Houston, the, the biggest thing I love about Houston is, is our cultural diversity. I love that we're a melting pot. I love that uh, you can go to Hillcroft and you feel like, you know, you're in India, Pakistan. I love that you can go to Bel Air and you can feel like you're, you're, you're in a different part of the world. Mm -hmm. And I love that we can all work together and, and get together. And, you know, it's just uh, that, that uh, cultural diversity. And then the strength of Houston. I've been here through the hurricanes and the floods, and I've seen how everybody gets together and does something to help their neighbor. That's, so yeah, I, that, I, always I mean, that's, that. that's always great for Houston, right? Oh, I love it. I mean, you, you'd see people that you wouldn't expect getting out their rafts and going out there and helping a family. Definitely, so yeah. I, I always love that. So, so tell me if today was this the last day on this earth for you, what are three things that you will tell your kids um, or, and or messages that you leave for your future generation? Great, great kids. Wow, um, I mean, that's uh, I. I would. I mean, as cliche as it is, I would always want them to be kind and humble. Mm -hmm. um, Love it. You're not better than anybody. You, you're not. You're not stronger than anybody. You're not. Uh, you're not bigger than anybody. Everybody's got their own thing, and and they're all trying to make it. So always be kind and humble. Um, you know, treat yourself with respect. If you if you carry yourself with respect and keep your chest up. Um, I think everybody's going to respect you and everyone's going to know that, that uh, you stand for something. I love it. And um, always love your family. Love it. Always. Um, never, never ever lose that, that, uh, that, pers in, that in perspective. Family will always be there. Yeah, always. All right, so, and I see, I see you're a family guy because I always see pictures of you on Instagram. Yep. yep. Remember, it's Cruise 826, C-R-U-I-Z-E 826. Thank you, Sam. Love the 826. Um, Three things you'd want to share with the world. Um, I, I guess today is the last day on earth. Three things you want to share, or three things you—it's—it's it's your last day. Nobody will ever hear from you again. You want to share with the world that, that people will remember you by. Um, I think I think one of the things is just uh, take it easy. Take it easy. Yeah, take it easy. Don't 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 rush it. Don't uh, overthink it. Don't uh, don't make it so important when it isn't just just le take a deep breath and just take it easy um the other thing is is i mean be nice to the world stop abusing it stop uh stop you know just doing bad things i mean if you if you can hold on to that trash until you get home hold on to it don't throw it out the window um and then the the other thing is um just really uh i guess you know again it goes back to being humble and kind just just be a good person be a good person. Be a good. Be a good. Be great. You know what you do, but be good to people around you. You know, don't don't don't. Uh, I mean, just don't beat beat people up because they're slow. Or they they have anything wrong with them, or they're just not there. But just just 
the material stuff will come and go. You and I both know that. Yeah. You know, life is life is always going to be that that uh, poker table. One hand is good, next hand is bad. Yeah. But you just got to keep going and just just keep being nice. Yeah. And those are some powerful powerful words that you said, powerful advice. I mean, you know, be and 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 you know, that's one thing that I always say, be be kind and be humble because it's not who how much money you have is who you are. Oh yeah. It's how you treat people. Yeah. Uh, here, I'll share something with you. Like I was at this, uh, I was at this game the other day and uh, there's this guy who comes sits right next to me, but he has his brand of his business. And I'm like, Oh man, I know that. I know that business. I'm excited to see this guy. And I'm like, Oh man, how are you doing? This guy looks back at me and he's like, I'm doing good. Come see us. And he turns back around and I'm like, wow. Okay, douchebag. I know. You know, I'm like, and then so the guy sitting right next to me, he was like, uh, he's like, this guy's not too nice. I'm like, it's okay, man. You yeah, know, I know, but but he, look, look what happened right there. He lost the world of business. Yeah, like, like, and he, uh, and he like, lost a good friend. I mean, you could have, you guys could have been. Yeah, I mean, but it's just like, to me, it does to me, I always think about it. it's not how much money you have, how much wealth have you acquired, or what experience have you have, what kind of car you drive. And where do you live at? It's about who you are. I know. Bro, fucking smile. It's I not going to cost you no, exactly. not a penny. Yeah. Shake the fucking hand. <laughs> I know. And it, it makes a huge difference. I yeah. mean, everybody around you, they see it. You'd be surprised who watches you. Yeah. You know, so it could be like in your warehouse, you know, you just yeah. doing one thing nice, your whole warehouse gets infected with it. And they're yeah. like, they say, man, my boss is, he's the shit. Yeah. So why am I being a dick to everybody when my boss, as busy as he is and as much as he's got going on, he can, you know, stand down and offer me a, a bottle of water. I mean, it's, it's just, it's just be nice to the world. And I, and I loved it that you said, be nice to everybody around you. Cause, cause that's one of my mantras. Give me one mantra that you live by. Never give up. Never give up. Never give up. Love it, man. Thank you so much for coming Thanks, over Sam. here. I appreciate you being over here today and at the Make Shit Happen podcast. <laughs> and what do you think about the name Make Shit Happen? You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a quick uh, a quick Instagram video because I love it, and I'm gonna get Sam on my my Instagram. So again, please, guys, cruise eight two six, and uh, let me let me get Sam on a video right now. <laughs> hey, so this so, so we're here with. Uh, Make, Make shit, shit happen, happen with my boy. Sam. Make shit happen podcast. Thank y'all for tuning in to Make Shit Happen. Make shit happen. Make shit happen, everybody. <laughs>